our nation has forgotten what it was like for the elderly before Social Security and Medicare. It wasn't really so very long ago that widows and people who retired without pensions and didn't have families to care for them or savings, the only resource they had was to go to the poorhouse. Can you imagine the poorhouse? Today, a hope of many years standing is in large part fulfilled. When President Roosevelt signed the Social Security Act in 1935, more than half of American seniors lived in poverty. Today, that number is 13 percent. Roosevelt's goal of providing a safety net for the nation's elderly has been realized and expanded with the creation of Medicare in 1965. With the passage of Medicare, retirees and the elderly now had access to a secure retirement income and health care. Together, these programs have created a social insurance safety net which has literally transformed the quality of life for older Americans. The floor. Bring your knees to your chest and stretch out your back. The Medicare, of course, uh, makes all the difference in the world. Without the coverage, most people in retirement can't afford it. If it wasn't for this now, what would I do? I'm an old man. You know, here I am, 80 years old. <laughs> I mean, I don't know uh, with today's economy, especially how people could even survive without those programs. Uh, and in fact, you know, I'm counting on them. And that's how most Americans feel about Social Security and Medicare. It's what led President Roosevelt's son, James Roosevelt, to create the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare in 1982 as a way to mobilize that public support. It seemed to me that if we could think of a way of doing it and, and organizing them and making their force and their feelings felt by the members of the Congress, that this would ensure that the system, Social Security system, survived and would be improved. We're the five million members and supporters of the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare. And we're watching. Watching and rallying, writing letters and lobbying, for 25 years, National Committee members have been engaged in our unique mission to advocate, educate, and fight to preserve Social Security and Medicare. From Capitol Hill to cities nationwide, our members know that advocacy works, and through the decades, their powerful voices have made a difference. What seniors are really saying to Congress through this half million uh, petition signer delivery is that we want you to be fair in dealing with us as seniors. From petitions then to internet campaigns today, the National Committee has rallied in defense of the nation's two most successful government programs, but never more so than when President Bush tried to privatize Social Security. If you've retired, you don't have anything to worry about. It's the third time I've said that. While President Bush's privatization campaign actually began with the passage of the Medicare Modernization Act, its grand finale was a public relations road trip selling private accounts to the American people. The National Committee mobilized in opposition. Save our Social Security! Save our Social Security! The National Committee's four million members and supporters are united in their opposition to privatization. Social Security was never meant to be an investment program. The white-hot rhetoric emanating from the White House on Social Security does disservice to Social Security, I believe, and a disservice to the American people. You privatize Social Security, what you do is you don't reform it, you dismantle it. We met the president head-on in towns and cities across the nation with a strategic advertising campaign. This traffic report and an important message on the future of your Social Security benefits is from the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare. Members just were not willing to give up their guaranteed Social Security benefits for a risky ride on Wall Street. And even though they needed help with the high cost of prescription drugs, they certainly did not want to dismantle Medicare in order to get that. They are absolutely opposed to privatization of any sort. So America's seniors and their families, including millions of National Committee members, fought back against the privatization of Medicare and Social Security. 
We join forces with economists, policy experts, and our allies in the aging network to expose the truth about private accounts. We coordinated congressional forums, scores of town hall meetings, and grassroots events. If somebody wants to talk to you about privatizing Social Security, you have to know what that means. The more people heard about this president's Social Security plan, the less they liked it. Private accounts will only worsen solvency for Social Security, and that fact just, just can't be ignored. I truly believe that grassroots campaigns such as ours make a difference. And we're still in the same place on Medicare Advantage. And so we continue to spread the word that America can afford Social Security and Medicare. Our policy analysts, with decades of experience in the Social Security and Medicare programs, work to educate policymakers and the public about these vital programs. Beneficiaries have also come to rely on advice from our senior policy analyst, Mary Jane Yarrington. Her Ask Mary Jane feature has been praised for the help it's provided to countless retirees. But there is more to this story. But it's the younger generations who are being misled to believe Social Security and Medicare won't be there for them. We're taking the truth about these programs to a younger audience. Our blog is called Entitled to Know because Americans are entitled to know the truth about Social Security and Medicare. YouTube now hosts the National Committee channel populated with videos on Social Security and Medicare. But here's the truth. Social Security is not bankrupt. And the National Committee's MySpace page takes our message directly to the young people targeted by those working so hard to undermine America's confidence in Social Security and Medicare. National Committee, this is Kathy. How may I help you? For 25 years, the National Committee has worked to keep American retirees, the disabled, and their families informed and involved. From snail mail to email, we've grown with the times to keep our members connected. And these days, the tools in our education and advocacy arsenal are diverse. Our newly revamped website provides the latest news, issue papers, and links of interest on issues that impact our members. Our email alerts and newsletters provide timely updates on current events. Hello, and welcome to the Legislative Hotline. The National Committee's Legislative Hotline provides the latest news from Washington, and our online Legislative Action Center connects seniors directly to their representatives on Capitol Hill. And we've now taken our educational mission another step further with the creation of the National Committee Foundation. Its mission is to research, educate, and inform Americans on the financial and health security of current and future generations. You're running in New Mexico 1. And our political action committee supports candidates who share our commitment to strengthening Social Security and Medicare. All of these efforts from our Capitol Hill lobbying and media outreach and grassroots development are designed to dispel the myths and promote the facts about Social Security and Medicare. People always ask me, what about the future? One thing is certain, America needs Social Security and Medicare, not just for today's retirees, but for future generations who will be living longer and redefining retirement. For a quarter century, the National Committee has been committed to preserving and strengthening Social Security and Medicare for all generations. Our unique mission reflects the hopes and dreams of parents and grandparents who want to secure retirement for their children and grandchildren. It's our American legacy, a legacy the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare is committed to protect in the past, present, and future.